everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary and I'm an illustrator and graphic designer living in Canada. I thought it would be nice today to just work on a sketch and talk to you in real time. Uh, I got a request for some more real time footage uh, and I thought that this would be easy and streamlined and nice to make for you guys. These are the sorts of videos that I like watching myself. Um, when people just sort of work and talk through their work and the decisions they're making or just talk about stuff that's not even that related. Um, so there might be breaks when I'm really focusing on what I'm drawing here, but maybe I can talk about some, some things that you guys will find interesting. Uh, so I've got here a sketch started of a character from a book that I'm reading right now. Right now I'm reading The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin and I've never read it before. I've read a lot of her other books. Um, in one of my previous sketchbook videos I did a whole lot of um, world building and concept sketches for Rokanan's World which is one of her shorter novels um, and I think that like the Left Hand of Darkness is one of her premier novels. You know, I've I've heard that title. You know, out of all her titles, I've heard that one the most before I I started reading her books. But it took me a while to get to reading it. Um, there's a really great hardcover version of the book that got put out recently. Well, last year, year before, uh, and I just think it's absolutely beautiful. And I've had an old UK version of The Left Hand of Darkness, just a paperback, sitting around for a long time, but I don't know, there's something nice about reading a hardcover. That's the Penguin Universe uh, special edition series. They have introductions by Neil Gaiman, uh, which, and he's, he's great too. I've I don't know. I've read the Graveyard book by him. I haven't done a lot of reading of his. Oh, and I've listened to the audiobook of American Gods. But I follow him on Tumblr, so I know him like a little bit more as a person and as, as his writing, if that makes sense. Uh, he seems like a really great, intelligent human being. Um, but anyway, he did the uh, introductions for this series of science fiction novels that Penguin released with typographic covers that are really beautiful. Um, I'll try to remember to insert at least a link to the Left Hand of Darkness version. It's this lovely blue hardcover. So there's something luxurious about reading a, a hardcover instead of a, a paperback. Um, kind of makes it feel more important. but. I've been really enjoying it so far. I haven't finished it. Um, so if you've finished it, uh, keep your spoilers to yourself. <laughs> I always end up like a little bit spoiled because I'll, I'll look up certain things as I'm reading on the internet and stuff just to, just to know better what I'm reading, like especially if I get confused or just want to know more. Uh, but I figured for this video, since I'm reading The Left Hand of Darkness, I would do a sketch of the main character, uh, Genli Ai, or Genli, Genli or Genli. Um, he's a, an ambassador of sorts, um, not in an official sense, from Earth to a planet called Winter. So. I thought, um, mostly because I wasn't going to use this page in this sketchbook to put a picture of some ice and stuff on it because it's a very cold planet, which I guess I can relate to because I'm from Canada. <laughs> um, but yeah, the descriptions of this character are really nice um, because he's among a certain people who are suited better to, to colder climates. Um, and they end up sort of shorter on average. Uh, and he comes and he's this tall, alien-looking human. Um, 
even though they're all humans, it's sort of one of those sci-fi universes. But they describe him as very tall and having even darker skin than the people who live on the winter planet and that they make fun of him for having such a flat nose and ask him if he's broken it all the time. <laughs> yeah, just little little things like that. Like it's a really nice way to describe your character rather than sitting there at the beginning. He has black hair, he's very tall. You know, that's the sort of thing that writers don't really do once you get past like kids chapter books, I guess. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just thought I would do a sketch. I like to sketch portraits um, in my sketchbooks. I don't really do them like as finished pieces very often, but they're fun to do. So I based his face off of a photograph of a model that I liked. Um, I thought the profile was nice and I did some subtle changes so it's not exactly like, you know, the real person who's in the photograph. It's a little bit different, a little bit imagined. And then I want to give him sort of some sci-fi winter clothing over here. Um, probably sort of geometric and uh, abstracted a little bit, just something that's going to be fun to look at a big collar like this and some hard edges I mean not all sci-fi has to have hard edges right but that's like that's what's modern I guess or or trendy um, Ursula K. Le Guin's books are sort of like like the way she describes their clothing is even kind of retro like very sort of 70s idea of science fiction where everybody's like wearing clothes woven out of hemp and stuff like that you know they all are running around like they're in medieval times but there's a lot more that goes into how clothes are made and how clothes should be designed for characters than just like oh they're sort of a rudimentary society so they should look exactly like medieval Europeans like that's not that doesn't really make sense so branching out a bit even if it's just subtle in the way that you do the shapes and stuff is a, a nice way to think about doing character design and costume design I am um, I'm a graphic designer right now that's my position at the museum I work at but I've done a lot of theater stuff in the past and not specifically costume design um, but it's always been like an interest of mine. I love costume design, I love all of the designs that Trisha Bigger and uh, her team did for the Star Wars prequels. I think some of those are like the most beautiful clothes in the world. <laughs> um, I have a really great book full of photographs of all those costumes. Um, and you know, John Molo and all those guys that worked on the original Star Wars. Um, even the stuff that Mobius designs for his comic book characters or for the first, like, he worked on a few movies too. I don't know, I like clothes. I like, I like buying clothes. <laughs> I like... I like textiles, I like sewing. I don't sew a lot anymore, but I, I know how. Um, I've never really had the patience to be a really good seamstress. One of the people I work with was actually like an actual trained production seamstress and like she could probably sew me out of the water for sure. I never really had the patience for like French seams and stuff like that, so not really the good you know, the best attitude to have towards making clothing, but I like to make things and make little toys and stuff like that. When I was a teen, I would make like tons of little like plushies and sell them at anime conventions. <laughs> that was fun. I just like make them out of fleece and hand stitch them and sort of do that while I'm watching television or something like that. 
or sit on the couch and listen to an audiobook. Yeah, I kind of like this sketch. I think I'm going to add some other mediums to it. This sketchbook, by the way, is just something I picked up at a dollar store. Um, there's a dollar store chain called Dollarama here in Canada. I don't know if you guys have it in other parts of the world, but um, sometimes you can find some really neat things in there for really affordable prices. Um, sometimes it's all just, you know, plastic crap too, but there's a dollar store right by my doctor's office, so I always like go in there after I go to the doctor's office see if there's anything good. Often there isn't and so I just leave but I like this sketchbook. It's got a nice sort of floral cover but it also has different types of paper in it. Um, so most of it is this white paper which I'd say it's not it's not very heavy it's probably like I don't know 80 or 50 pound like not not really thick at all. Um, it takes a little bit of of paint, but not really. So it's more of a sketch sketchbook. So I've been sticking other papers in it, but it does have these two panels of like almost cardboard. So that's one of the ones I'm drawing on now. And then it has this center bit of craft paper, which I always like to go in order in my sketchbooks. I know not everyone does, but I like the the timeline of it so eventually I'll get to the nice craft paper in the middle but it's gonna be a little while but yeah I was poking under my desk and I found this box of Caran d'Ache water soluble wax pastels I'm not sure how you make wax water soluble but um, so they're watercolor crayons basically and they kind of look like like face paints or something um, but I tested them out in the back of this sketchbook just to see how they would do and I think it might be kind of neat so I'll just scribble some on there I guess. It's been super hot where I live but mixed with like crazy beautiful thunderstorms. Um, so that's been really nice but I've been like so hot that I've hardly been working in my sketchbook or anything like that because I just get home and I am gross and sticky and even right now my legs are like pretty sticky to be honest. Um, so the weather's been kind of a kind of a drag lately. Just just the hot, just the heat. I'm not really a, a heat person. I know some people live in places where it's hot all the time and I I don't know. I like that the seasons change even though I complain about pretty much every single one of them. Huh. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's been hot, um, so I haven't been sketching as much as I would like to. I've been trying to like sketch more and get through my sketchbooks a little bit faster now that I'm settled in the new place, but eh. sometimes it just doesn't happen. But uh, yeah, the thunderstorms have been really, really nice. We get crazy prairie thunderstorms out here where you can just watch the lightning roll out over the, over the prairie level of above the valley. Like I live in a river valley. Um, and it's crazy just how fast the weather will change out here. If the wind really picks up, it can really blow blow through the area because it is that valley. Um, but yeah, it's about, I heard someone at work saying it's about on average 10 degrees hotter than the city I moved from throughout the summer and on average about 10 degrees colder than that city in the winter. So. Got a lot of uh, really, really cold, slow winter days <laughs> coming up in the future. That's okay, I'm kind of a homebody. I don't, uh, I like the outdoors and obviously I go out there to paint a lot, but I am perfectly happy staying inside by myself, you know, painting and writing 
or playing video games. I usually get like a Skyrim kick in the winter. <laughs> um, and I don't know if everybody goes through like a Skyrim phase in the winter, but something about just all the snow and the cold is like, this is perfect weather to play Skyrim. <laughs> and like, I've never even got that far in Skyrim. Like, never. I always end up just dicking around in the open world and not following the not following the main storyline so I've never like finished the main storyline in Skyrim even though it's been out for like has it been out for like seven years or something like that or more <laughs> um, but I still really like it right you're allowed to like something even though you only play the dumb parts of it right <laughs> um, but yeah, I've talked to a lot of people, like, friends in, in school and stuff that are like, Oh yeah, I always play way more Skyrim in the winter than I do at any other time. <laughs> I don't know, it makes, the, it makes the snow seem a little more fantastical if you're, you know, also fighting wolves and spiders in it. <laughs> My little brother got an Oculus Rift and we don't live together anymore so I don't get to play it a lot but he got the Skyrim for it and uh, the Skyrim anyway that just sounds super cool to me <laughs> like Skyrim in VR that's awesome hmm he needs sort of like a a bottom to his outfit here I don't know maybe I'll do it like like a batik pattern sort of tabard hanging down. They always mention in the left hand of darkness that they wear these um, tabard like pieces of clothing um, with pockets and stuff like that. So I don't know, kind of like a cross between a, a, a surcoat and an apron. <laughs> I don't know, something like that, but they're made out of, of leather. Um, I don't know, I pay a lot of attention to the descriptions in in books, especially Ursula K. Le Guin's books. Like, I really like her descriptive writing. Um, I think it's really nice. Uh, I have an easy time imagining it in my head. Uh, so I I like to pay a lot of attention to, to those parts of books because I'm such a visual person, I guess. I like to imagine what the world would look like and what the people would look like and what they'd be wearing. And anytime I, I work on like, uh, for example, a Dungeons and Dragons character, I always have to draw them before I can really say anything for sure about them. Like the, the physical or visual, I guess, yeah, because it's usually a 2D representation, saying physical sounds a bit odd. But the, the visual representation of a character is the first step for me, for imagining something. Um, even for, like, the novel that I'm writing in my spare time, like, I drew those characters like so many times before I even started considering writing a novel about them. So, and I guess that's why I went to art school. Hmm. I just like to draw things. I like how this uh, white, this white pastel looks with the the water on it it's sort of it's sketchy but it's also fluid um, yeah it's a neat little neat little medium I'm I don't think I'm the one who bought these I feel like I either got them as a gift or they belonged to my dad because um, this isn't the sort of thing I would really gravitate towards usually not to like pastels um, I tend to be more of a pencil crayon kind of person. I like pointy edges and 
lots of control that way but these are kind of fun in that they give you unavoidable texture <laughs> um, and they're pretty fun on this this heavy heavy sort of cardstock brown paper that they put in this sketchbook. So I don't know, I'd, I'd love to know what you guys are reading right now. Um, and if you've ever read Left Hand of Darkness or any of Ursula K. Le Guin's other books. I've read um, Rokanon's World, Planet of Exile, City of Illusions, uh, the Dispossessed, and I feel like I've, I've read a few more. Um, I've read some of her short stories as well. And they're all just super inspiring. I love that sort of romantic feeling science fiction, you know, where it feels less like a, less like a satire, like and more, more like an epic or a, or a romance. I mean, that's what they feel like to me. Not like a, not like a rom-com romance, but like a, a classical romance. Just the way she describes everything and the way she treats her characters. She's definitely one of my favorite authors and probably will be for a super long time. But yeah, let me know what you're reading. Let me know what your favorite books are, what your favorite uh, genre is. Do you read a lot? I make the effort to read every day. For a while there, I definitely didn't reach that goal because I was like, Basically, I was just stressed out and tired, and so I fell asleep right away all the time. <laughs> I like to read before bed, but I can never like read very long, so it's not really the best time for me to read, but that's when I read. Um, I feel like my brain is definitely happier whenever I'm reading consistently. I feel like I get stupid if I don't read for like a week or more, or even just a few days or more. Let's see, I'm gonna see if I can pick up some of this pigment just by brushing on here. Yeah, sure can. Yeah, that's fun. And uh, maybe you can let me know like what your favorite characters are, like what are some of your all-time favorite novel or movie characters, or which costume designs you like the best. Um, I'm sure everyone has that one costume where they're like, oh yeah, I wish I could wear that, or I wish I had thought of that, or something like that. So yeah, favorite books, favorite characters, favorite costume designs. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, I'm not always the best at responding to every comment, but I do try to at least like or give a heart to let you know that I've read it. I'm a bit of a busy person and I try not to spend too much time sifting through comments um, since this is sort of YouTube is something I do on the side now, and uh, I have to allocate my time wisely. If this was my full-time job, obviously I would dedicate much more time to reading comments, and some people definitely do that. It's neat to see all the different approaches you can have on a platform like this. Like, 
tons of different ways to basically weight weight your engagement or engagement isn't the right word but involvement maybe or anyway like there are some people who comment on my videos like very consistently and I love that it's awesome it's really great to hear that you guys like what I'm making or if you have suggestions and stuff like that but just because I don't reply doesn't mean I haven't seen it I promise I do go through every no notification that I get I totally do and if you like this style of video let me know I think I think this is about done. I kind of like how it is. Um, it's obviously not a finished illustration, but it's not supposed to be. It's just sort of a character sketch. Um, but if you like just this talking video, I know I did one before with that uh, still life I did of the the bell pepper, but I could definitely do these more often. They're pretty 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 chill for me to film, which is nice when I have a a busy week. I'm gonna be away for the weekend and this way I have something filmed. It's Friday by the way. <laughs> this this way I have something filmed that I can just upload on Sunday. So I think I think that's it. I think that's gonna be the sketch that I do today. It's pretty simple. Pretty I don't know. Yeah, it's just a nice simple sketch. I hope you enjoyed watching and listening and as always, have a good one and I'll see you next week. Bye!